Thank you for watching this webcast. My name is Michael Howe. I'm the President of AUSI New South Wales. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you, uh, with what is unfortunately just a webcast, uh, Mr Neville Tompkins, who is the Chief Commissioner of New South Wales Scouts. But with a little bit of context, uh, I just need to explain that we in New South Wales, perhaps like the many of the other Australians, are in COVID lockdown and at short notice we're unable to have Nev as our face-to-face -face lunchtime lecturer and so he very flexibly has agreed to make this a webcast and I thank him very much for that uh, service. We were perhaps more prescient than we realised in when we picked Improving Resilience for our theme for this year and could I remind you that in January we had um, a futurist, Dr Keith Souter, talking to us about what possibly Australia would be like and how we'd need to be resilient in that environment. In February we had Commodore Vince De Pietro, the Head of Disaster Recovery for the South Coast Bushfires, talking about the lessons that we have learned from resilience from that uh, overwhelmingly uh, disastrous experience on the New South Wales South Coast. Uh, in March we had Dr Andy McGovern from Western Australia, the Chief Health Officer, talking to us about managing COVID and being resilient from a medical perspective. Uh, we then were privileged to have Mr Shane Fitzsimmons, the New South Wales Resilience Commissioner, talking to us about the very significant range of leadership things that he's implemented and learnt uh, from his time with the Rural Fire Service. And last month we had Commodore Chris Smallhorn talking to us about lessons in resilience from the perspective of a major defence equipment supplier and also emergency services supplier uh, and that's Coulson Air Tankers. In setting the scene for what is perhaps a more strategic talk today, could I remind you of the paradox that in a great lifestyle country and, and a strong economy relatively like Australia, unfortunately our youth suicide rate is the highest in the Western world. And there is no question that whether we're talking from an ADF perspective or just a general perspective of adults and employers, we truly would benefit from a supply or a stream of genuine resilient young people joining us uh, as we face our future. And so it's particularly important to understand that um, we can mould young people at a quite early age. I was struck by the interview of um, Julia Zamiro on home delivery on the ABC, uh, talking to Scott Farquhar, who was one of the founders of Atlassian, who attributed his experience with Scouts, uh, the Pennant Hill Scout Group uh, in Sydney. Uh, as one of his major guiding and influencing experiences as he grew up. I hope in that sense I've set the scene. But if you wanted to find a little more about NEV, please go to the Scouts New South Wales website and look up the Board of Scouts, a very impressive group of people including NEV. And uh, again, it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce him, thank him for being very flexible and he, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Neville Tompkins, OIMJP, the Chief Commissioner of Scouts in New South Wales. Thank you, Nev. A very good afternoon to you.
My name is Neville Tompkins, Chief Commissioner for Scouts New South Wales. Can I firstly say how delighted I am to present this podcast? I start by acknowledging the original inhabitants of the land on which we meet. Wherever we are in New South Wales or elsewhere in Australia, I pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging. I am very pleased to speak with you about Scouts and Youth Resilience and how appropriate this is in the middle of a pandemic. In so doing, I will try and pick up some of the themes of your previous speakers on the topic of resilience, but of course, with a scouting focus. Let me share with you a bit of context about scouting. Scouting is a values-based volunteer outdoors focused movement with some 52 million members worldwide. The purpose of scouting is to develop young people from five to 25 years of age to be better citizens of their local communities and to help build a better world. Through an age specific program, we develop the leadership skills, the self-confidence and the resilience of our young people. We learn by doing. Our founder, Lord Robert Baden Powell, was himself a highly decorated military leader. He was also a visionary and a world leader. And here in Scouts Australia, we are so incredibly proud to have a 113 year history to scouting. To our delight, the World Movement of Scouting has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize with the outcome of that nomination to be revealed in October this year. You might also be interested to know that we appear to be the only organisation in the world working on all 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which have been promulgated by the United Nations. Worldwide, we enjoy a presence in 126 different countries. In other words, in all countries of the world, except four, which are predominantly communist countries. Here in Australia, we have some 72,000 members. We are the largest youth development organisation, not just in Australia, but also in each state and territory. Across New South Wales, we have 18,000 members, including 15,000 youth and 3,000 volunteer leaders. We have a statewide footprint with close to half of our 418 scout groups in regional New South Wales. This is an important fact as I develop the resilience theme throughout this talk. Another feature is our diversity. Muslim Scouts is one of our fastest growing groups in metropolitan New South Wales. We have Vietnamese Scouts and we have Jewish Scouts. We have programs for children with additional needs. And we also have the largest number of lone Scouts in Australia, principally for youth in remote areas. We also have a Scout program for the sons and daughters of serving ADF members. And out of interest, nearly 40% of our members are female. As a volunteer based organisation, we contribute over 1.5 million volunteer hours annually to the New South Wales economy which is valued at about $65.5 million. 
in our 113 year history, we have empowered more than 1 million young Australians to help create a better world. This led the Australian government in 2008, our centenary year, to declare that year as the year of the Scout with a $1 circulating coin struck in our honour. Let me now move on to the topic of youth resilience and scouting. Our founder, Lord Baden Powell, said, and I quote, the scouting method affords an opportunity for initiative, self control, self reliance, and self direction. Of course, these characteristics of scouting underpin personal resilience. Lord Baden Powell also coined the motto of be prepared. A scout is never taken by surprise. He or she knows exactly what to do when anything unexpected happens. Through scouting, we want to give young people the courage, the positivity and the resilience to keep going through good times and bad. Whilst that has been our goal, we were never sure until recently what actual impact we were having on young people. In 2019, we partnered with the organisation Resilient Youth Australia, together with the University of South Australia, to independently measure and validate the impact the scouting program was having on our youth. As part of the methodology, over 1,000 scouts aged between 8 and 18 years across Australia were surveyed. They were compared with the Australian norm data set of some 50,000 youth in the same age cohort and in the same year. The survey involved youth answering 75 multiple choice questions against the components of resilience as defined by Resilient Youth Australia. They define resilience as, and I quote, the ability to draw upon the strengths within yourself and around you to flexibly respond to life while remaining true to yourself and creating relationships with others. Those 75 questions covered a range of areas, including their strengths, life satisfaction, hopefulness, coping style, mental health, and protective behaviours. The results were scientifically backed and validated and made available in a 15 page report titled The Scouting Effect, measuring scouting's impact on the resilience of young people in Australia. That's the publication. The outcomes were very reassuring for us. It's official. Scouting builds resilience for life. We now have empirical evidence of the positive role scouting plays in building resilience of young people to help young people cope and indeed thrive during even the most challenging times. Let me now turn to the specific results. The Independent Resilience Survey found that young people involved in scouts have an overall better life satisfaction than their non-scouting peers. The survey also found that the longer our youth members stay in scouts, the more resilient they are likely to become. 
from being able to find ways to solve a problem to being more likely to forgive themselves if they make a mistake. The independent survey found scouts demonstrate a far wider range of resilient behaviours than their peers. Compared with young Australians of the same age, the survey found scouts are 12% more likely to feel good about themselves, 13% more likely to trust others, 15% more likely to feel they have made a positive contribution to their community, 15% more likely to forgive themselves if they make a mistake, and 12% less likely to report feeling tired or having little energy. Scouts also have a healthier mental state than non-scouts by 13%, which is especially important during COVID-19. They also report that they have a healthy body, 12% more than non-scouts. At a time when everyone needs a little extra positivity in their lives, we are proud of the significant contribution scouting is making across New South Wales and Australia, both in metropolitan and importantly in New South Wales in our regional areas. It is those regional areas that have not only had to endure the effects of the pandemic, but also droughts, floods, and bushfires. The contribution that Scouts is making is to equip a new generation of youth with the essential skills they need to bounce back from challenges and face the world with confidence. These results detailed in the Resilient Youth Australia report are groundbreaking. They are also exciting for Scouts as they reaffirm the essential service Scouting has delivered and continues to deliver to our local communities. The Scouting spirit of resilience is alive and well. To access the detailed survey results, I invite you to go to the Scouts Australia website and search for the Scouting Effect. There is also a two minute video by our Chief Commission of Australia, Phil Harrison, together with an info infographics summarising the key outcomes. I'm Phil Harrison, Chief Commissioner of Scouts Australia. What I want to share with you is not really new. We've known it for a long time. But now we have the data to prove it. Scouting changes lives. It's unique in giving every young person the chance to develop leadership skills and contributes to positive mental health. A UK childhood study found that former Scouts suffer less mood and anxiety disorders even decades later. But today I want to talk about resilience the ability to cope with life's challenges and keep things in perspective. We've surveyed Scouts across Australia in partnership with Resilient Youth Australia. The results show that young people in Scouting are amazing. We call it the Scouting Effect. Compared with other young people of the same age, Scouts across Australia are more optimistic about their future, hold more positive values, enjoy greater life satisfaction, feel healthier physically and mentally, read more, have more fun at school, and are more likely to help other people and help out at school, contribute more to their local community, and much, much more. Read all about it in this booklet. It's called The Scouting Effect, or check out this infographic. You can find both on the Scouts Australia website. 
To demonstrate the resilience of our youth, let me now share with you just one experience through COVID-19. As a result of the public health orders in New South Wales, we were not able to hold our regular scout meetings, nor were we able to hold our regular outdoor activities, including adventurous activities, our camps and our major events. What most impressed me is how quickly our movement developed online scouting, where the scouting program was delivered over the internet and where activities were conducted in the home and in the backyard, all within the public health order restrictions. One particularly memorable experience was the number of our young people who observed Anzac Day from the end of their driveway. Interestingly enough, it was our youth and our young leaders who led the charge in developing the Scouting at Home program and taught their older adult leaders how it could best be done. I acknowledge we lost members through COVID-19, largely from families who felt that they joined Scouting to do outdoor adventure and that online scouting was not delivering what they wanted. That is entirely understandable. However, Scouts New South Wales has now regained in absolute numbers all those members it lost during the early days of COVID. They may not necessarily be the same members. There has, of course, been churn. However, as a result of COVID, Many more families are looking for a values-based, well-run and outdoors-focused organisation for their sons and daughters to join. That means many more new families who have had no previous association with Scouts are now turning to the Scout movement. Our task is to deliver those expectations at a time when COVID is still restricting what we can do, when we can do it, and how it can be done. The final point I wanted to make is the importance of community groups, such as Scouts, working in partnership with the state government and its emergency services to further improve the overall resilience of our local communities. As I said earlier, Scouts has a statewide footprint. We have Scout halls, campsites, and activity centres that can and have been used by the State Emergency Service together with the Rural Fire Service at times of a disaster. This included in the 2019-2020 bushfires and also in the 2021 floods. In Murren Bateman, nestled between Yass and Canberra, our scout group is building a hall that will also be a, a training centre for the local rural fire service. We are now working with Resilience New South Wales with Commissioner Shane Fitzsimons, your last speaker on resilience, as well as the Australian Red Cross, to reassess our scout halls and campgrounds as safe havens and of, as places of retreat during a disaster. This is about building future disaster resilience in local communities with scouts being part of the solution. Scouts New South Wales is also active in assisting local communities to cope with and to recover from natural disasters in other ways. It would not surprise you that a number of our rovers, that is our 18 to 25 year olds, as well as our leaders, also volunteer with the State Emergency Service and the Rural Fire Service. During the recent bushfires, 
our youth members were amongst the first to prepare meals for the firefighters and the many hundreds of evacuated families. We welcomed the CWA into our kitchens. We also delivered thousands of face masks as the bushfire cleanup began, and of course, during the early days of the pandemic. We distributed hundreds of quilts donated from all around Australia to us for families who lost their homes to the bushfires. One of our many community projects involved building shelters and making hundreds of pouches for injured wildlife to recover. It's about service to community. These are just a few more examples of how scouting is working in a different way to build resilience in our local communities. We want scouting to not only build resilience in young people, but to also be part of local communities to build their resilience. I finish by saying how proud Scouts New South Wales is to be building resilience amongst our youth and that we now have the empirical data to demonstrate this. We are also proud to be contributing in other ways to enhancing resilience of local communities at times of disaster. On behalf of Scouts Australia, New South Wales branch, I am grateful for the opportunity to share the scouting story with you. And I do hope that you have found this to be of some interest. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to thank Dev very much for his presentation and the very powerful range of ideas and facts that he presented to us. Like anyone, I have a personal set of views that I've reacted to. I'd like to share some of those with you, but I hope that you gained some many powerful messages and lessons uh, out of the presentation from Neville. Firstly, on a personal base, could I just uh, thank Neville for his resilience uh, in the service that he's given in the Commonwealth Public Service uh, as the Chief Commissioner of Scouts in Canberra as an International Commissioner for Scouts and now the Chief Commissioner of Scouts in New South Wales. Uh, a very impressive range of service. Neville, on behalf of the community, thank you very much for your contribution and your resilience. I'd like to just share with the audience uh, a couple of major points that struck me about the uh, presentation. Firstly, I was impressed that Scouts had taken the trouble to partner with other organisations in Australia, including uh, the University of South Australia, to basically carry out some validated independent research on whether Scouts do in fact contribute and in what ways and do they build resilience. And I do hope that you will take the trouble and if you go back to Neville's uh, presentation, he gives you the reference as to where you'll find it, on the Scouts Australia website to the publication uh, which uh, is now just a couple of years old but in fact is about the resilience effect and the impact of Scouts on improving resilience in lifestyle in the attitude of young people and I commend Scouts very much for their initiative in both opening themselves up to that particular bit of independent research and I'm personally delighted that the results have been so positive. So as we round off uh, today's session or, th or this month's session, can I just say that it's very clear, to me at least, that organisations like Scouting can significantly contribute to improving the health, the attitude, the lifestyle and the resilience of young people. I hope that you've been struck by this evidence in a very positive way 
and there are many implications it seems to me for ADF recruiting, uh, the ability of ADF units to encourage people in a uh, you know, pre-enlistment type statement to have a go, to be in Scouts, to do things like the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. In summary, I think Neville has prevented, uh, presented to us compelling evidence that Scouts New South Wales are making a very significant difference. I was particularly impressed by the way that they're now cooperating with the Resilience Commissioner uh, in helping to build our resilience capabilities um, uh, in anticipation of the next natural disaster or, what, or whatever we may have to do with. So on behalf of everyone, I'd like to sincerely thank Nev for his flexibility, his contribution, and through him, I'd like to pay tribute to Scouts for their contribution in assisting resilience and building resilience in young people of today. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you'll look forward to next month's presentation where we have Major General Susan Coyle, the relatively recently appointed head uh, of cyber uh, in uh, the Joint Operations Command. I'm not sure whether COVID will permit us to have a face-to-face, -face, but regardless, we'll certainly present a webcast if we're not possibly able to have a face-to-face -face in next month. Thank you for being with us. I hope that you'll continue to support RUSI. Please join us if you can, follow us on our website and look out for our webcasts. Once again, I'm Michael Howe, President, RUSI New South Wales, and thank you for your involvement and support.